Hey folks and welcome back to another combined blue light YouTube video and podcast. This is the only place you need to be to learn all you need to know about the police recruitment process and increasingly I'm covering police promotion and specialist interview, transfer interviews, covering everything you need really from the point where you apply to join the police all the way to the point where you actually retire from the police service many years later. So um, this week I'm going to cover something really special because I'm going to introduce you to the new values from the brand new competency and values framework. Actually, it's not a brand new competency and values framework, but there's a story behind this. So at the beginning of this week, I was at New Scotland Yard meeting uh, Leanne, who is the new head of diversity and inclusion. And we had a really good conversation about the police recruitment process. Uh, where it's going well and where it's not going well, where it's just a bit of a train wreck. And one of the things I made comment on was how the current process just doesn't seem to assess for your values. It doesn't seem to really do anything at all to check what your values are before you actually join the constabulary. And I'm talking in the main about the online assessment centre because from the College of Policing because I know a lot of forces have their own additional interviews where they really do test your, your values but those values are being assessed from the competency and values framework which was introduced in 2016 I think and for those of you who've tried to read that document I know because you've told me this you find it really confusing because it's in sort of HR speak and then there's that wheel of confusion which no one understands and no one gets why the values don't have any different levels and the competencies have three levels and everything's in clusters and subclusters and uh, it just drives people bonkers because they just don't get it. And so one of the things we talked about, and I didn't have the answers, was, well, what would the alternative values be? And so after spending, uh, two days later, I spent a whole shift with the Violent Crime Task Force uh, for the Metropolitan Police where I saw values in action. And it just reminded me of the things that make police officers really, really special. The values they demonstrate on a daily basis, which aren't necessarily those of transparency, impartiality, integrity, and uh, the other one. <laughs> transparency, impartiality, integrity, and um, public service. Yeah, those, those are the four values from the competency and values framework. My goodness, I almost slipped up there, didn't I? Um, but when you read those values, they, they don't really come alive for me. They don't really talk to me. They don't really do anything that talks to my heart. They don't do anything that makes me think, oh, yeah, I get that. I really get that. Like I said, they're in sort of HR speak. And so following my experience with the volume crime, uh, sorry, the violent crime task force, and um, following a little focus group I put together. So uh, last night, uh, about 15 of my clients came together and we were doing something else actually. We were practicing for interview questions uh, for the online assessment center. But the other thing that we did is we, we started thinking about, well, what would the values be? If they're not the ones from the competency and values framework, what values would they expect to be demonstrating as a future police officer. And so we combine that with my sort of 30 something years of experience in the police sector, plus what I witnessed on um, Wednesday evening with the Violent Crime Task Force and their thoughts as well. And we came up with this. This is the new set of values for the competency and values framework. Um, who knows, it might take off. But anyway, this is just our thoughts on what you should be demonstrating either as a potential police officer or a serving police officer. And if you've got any ideas about what you would add to this, then please do let me know. Um, and hopefully this makes a little bit more sense to you than the four values from the competency and values framework. So let's go through them in um, order. Actually, they're in no particular order, but just the sort of, we'll go around clockwise, shall we? And if you're listening to this on the podcast, you'll just have to imagine it. It's all on my whiteboard that's just behind me. Uh, so the first one is compassion. And I saw this being demonstrated by the violent crime task force officers who, in dealing with every person who they stopped and searched and every person who they stopped and talked to, there was this 
I'd describe it as compassion. Yes, I'd describe it as compassion. They, they wanted the experience to end on a positive note. They wanted to help that other person understand what they were doing and why they were doing it. And they, they really did deeply care for what that other person thought of them. And the reason was, was because they wanted that person to um, have a good experience, as good as you could have if you were being stopped and searched. So I think that was part of compassion, I think. You know, but there's another side of compassion as well, and that's, you know, to what extent can you care for another person? care for their needs to what extent are you going to care for what makes them tick even if it's not what make, makes you tick or to what extent you're going to care about their concerns and so um i think it's worded differently in the cvf but i quite like that that compassion and it probably means lots of different things to different people and i'm quite sure some clever hr sorts will come and define it with lots of behaviors that you know that demonstrate compassion but I think compassion means many things to different people, but we like that one. We thought, yes, let's include compassion. Um, the, the second one is, is being bold. And this again is something I saw from the violent crime um, uh, task force officers. They were really bold in the use of their powers. So they, they knew their tools and powers and they weren't afraid to use them. They were bold in what they were doing. Uh, it's not as in bold as in pushing the envelope of um, you know, the, the limits of legality or anything like that, but they were quite knowledgeable and they understood their powers and they were really, really prepared to utilise them uh, for the benefit of the communities that they were trying to protect at the time. So I like that. I really like what they were doing in terms of that, that, that boldness. Um, not stepping back and thinking, oh, I'm not sure if we can do that. No, they knew exactly what they needed to do and they went and did it and they did it well so i like that boldness boldness in what we do and, and i think um, a lot of today's problems need a very bold approach as opposed to a timid approach so whether that's a value or not i don't know it's open to debate but i kind of like that boldness um courageousness this is something we've seen so many times especially when there's been acts of terrorism uh, you see police officers who are running towards danger where other people are running away from it that courageousness to do the right thing, uh, to um, be that person that will run towards danger, knowing that your life or your well-being could be at risk. It takes a certain type of courage to do that. And I think it also means something else in terms of courage. Um, courage to do the right thing. I know that the competency and values framework calls this integrity, but I, I think it might mean more sense to people if you called it courage to do the right thing in, in difficult circumstances, even when no one's watching. You know, are you prepared to do the right thing? Have you got the courage to do the right thing? So I quite like that as a value as well. Um, and op like I said, open to your feedback as to what you think. And um, this one here, enthusiasm and dedication. Th this came from... Um, the uh, little mini mini group I put together of people who uh, shared their ideas about uh, values. Uh, and again, I saw this with the Violent Crime Task Force officers. Um, this real enthusiasm, this, this dedication to their role. Um, they wanted to go out there and they wanted to catch the bad guys, catch the people who were carrying weapons and were prepared to hurt others or who have hurt people in the past who were on their way to commit uh, acts of violence. Um, they were so dedicated, so enthusiastic, even though some of, have been, some of them have been doing this for years. The enthusiasm just, it's hard to describe. It was hard to describe. So enthusiasm, dedication. Um, I often talk about this as giving 120% without being asked to do so. So they could have, and they weren't picking on an act for me. I was there for a whole shift with them. I, I've been a police officer for almost 30 years. I know when someone's putting an act on for uh, guests. I know when someone's putting an act on for me. And they weren't doing that. This was, this was genuine 120% uh, without being asked to do so. So I, I, don't, yeah, I don't know how you'd sum that up as a value, but um, I think that's in sort of plain English. 
the dedication, the enthusiasm, giving 120% without being asked to do so. And that's what they did all the way through their shift. They were actually so disappointed towards the end that we'd had a, I thought it was fairly eventful actually, there's been a, there was a lot of high speed vehicle uh, movements, um, a lot of stop and talks, a lot of stop and, uh, stop, stop and searches. Um, but they were disappointed that they didn't actually make an arrest. They, they were disappointed they didn't actually catch anyone committing an offence. But um, I, I tried to counter that with them by saying that, look, you know, you've had a successful evening, really successful, because they're all also bemoaning the fact that the response channel was really uneventful. I'm not going to use a Q word. Uh, neither did they. Um, but that's good, isn't it? Their enthusiasm, their dedication, them giving, and all of their colleagues giving 120% without being asked to do so, resulted in Brixton, where we were, being a safe place that night. And that will have a knock-on effect. It will have a knock-on impact. So I like that value. Um, where are we? Selflessness. Uh, I I think that's kind of covered a little bit in the CBF somewhere. But that, like again, buried, like I said before, buried under HR speak. So selflessness, um, this is where you're, you will, as a police officer, automatically, without even thinking about it, put other people's need before your own. Your needs always come second. The needs of the citizens who you are dealing with come first. The needs of those people who you arrest to bring to justice, they come first. They come, bef they come before your needs. So that's that sense of selflessness that you will always give. Keep giving and you'll keep giving and you'll keep giving. And you're not expecting any thanks. It's a nice when you do get a thank you, but you're not expecting it. You're doing it because you've got that sense of selflessness. So hopefully that makes sense as well. Um, positivity. Um, whether this is a value or not, I don't know. Well, it is, because this is what our focus group said. Uh, they said positivity, because some of them are actually special constables and PCSOs. And the one thing they said is that there's too many police officers out there who, okay, it's okay to have a bit of a moan and a groan. It's okay to joke around that TJF, think about it, if you've not heard that phrase before, TJF, think about what it stands for. I'm not going to say it um, <laughs> on a podcast or on the YouTube channel, especially on the YouTube channel, because they don't like things like that. But uh, just think about what it stands for. Um, but it's, they all said, and I agree with them, there's too many officers that are negative about the job, uh, negative about what they're doing and why they're doing it. A little bit of a grumble and groan, that's fine. If you're one of the grafters out there and you're working hard as a police officer, then every now and then you're entitled to have a bit of a grumble and groan. Never grumble and groan downwards. Always, if you're a sergeant, you don't grumble and groan to the PCs. If you're an inspector, you don't grumble and groan to the sergeants. Always grumble and groan upwards. Um, if ever, anyone's ever watched the film Private, Saving Private Ryan, that comes from that. And I think it's an awesome bit of advice. Um, but demonstrate positivity because you are a mirror as a police officer you're a leader and you're a mirror for others and if you demonstrate negativity then other people will demonstrate negativity as well if you demonstrate positivity in what you do and you believe in it and you feel it then people will follow you uh, and this is especially if you're going to be a sergeant i've seen so many teams that have become really grumpy and grown a lot and become really negative and it's because their sergeant was exactly like that and they will follow their leader in terms of that sense of positivity or negativity. Does that make sense? All right, so I like that one. Actually, I, I, I'm going to, that's definitely a value. Um, the last one, the last one, I love this one. I love this one. The stronger character. See, the police service, I think, is looking for strong characters because strong characters can stand up for themselves. Does that make sense? Strong characters can stand up for themselves and the police service needs people, needs police officers who can stand up for themselves. But we've called this one the stronger character because actually whilst the police service needs police officers who can stand up for themselves, I think what they really need is the stronger character because while the strong character can stand up for themselves, it's the stronger character that stands up for those people who can't stand up for themselves. Think about it, the vulnerable people that you're going to come across, the homeless who are in a corner, shop corner, and uh, shop door corner, and they're freezing cold at night time. Are you the police officer that walks past them without acknowledging them? 
or you the person that reaches out to them, reaches out that hand of friendship that comes from the Pelian principles? Are you that stronger character who stands up for those people who can't stand up for themselves, who stands up for the bullies in society, who, sorry, stands up against the bullies in society, who stands up for those people who are being bullied, who are being persecuted, who are having a difficult time? And this might be a lot of the people who you arrest to bring to justice. They may be at the end of their tether, and you might be that lifeline. You might be that person who can stand up for them, even though you're bringing them to justice for something, you're going to stand up for them because they need your support, they need your help. I like that. I'm just going to repeat it again because I just love it so much. The police are looking for strong characters because strong characters can stand up for themselves. But actually what they're really looking for is something beyond the strong character because whilst a strong character can stand up for themselves, it's the stronger character that stands up for those who can't stand up. For themselves that i think is the number one value anyway you may have a different view so there you go folks um we could add to this couldn't we um hopefully that makes a little bit more sense than the competency and values framework you're not being assessed against it at the moment <laughs> it's just what brendan came up with um having observed some police officers in action uh, based on reflections on my own career and also based on a little mini working group that i put together um, of people who are aspiring to be police officers. So has it got merit and worth? I don't know. Let me know. And um, hopefully for the head of inclusion and diversity, uh, Leanne, you did say you listened to my podcast. Here you go. One just for you. Hope you've all found it useful, folks, and I shall catch up with you next time. Bye-bye for now.